Hey, hey, okay, so we're starting Molecules of Life Part 1 today. So go ahead and pull out those notes, and remember, you want to highlight and write on your notes as you watch the video. So, Molecules of Life Part 1. Okay, so the first of the notes tells you just some vocabulary first. So, the word polymer, I'm actually going to write that one for you. P-O-L-Y means many. Okay, so many molecules make up a polymer. Okay, well, the word monomer is single. That's a one. So many monomers put together make up a polymer. So M-O-N-O -O means one. So that first, that first um, number one on your note says that polymers, these are formed from individual units called monomers. So for example, um, the bricks of the school make up the school. So the bricks would be the monomers and the school would be the polymers. So as we go through this, all the different molecules that we talk about in this video and the next video, the polymers have a monomer. Okay, so the monomers are linked together by covalent bonds. And a covalent bond, what that means is that they share the electrons. So covalent bonds are really strong bonds, and they share electrons. These, it says, these are another example of the theme where structure equals function. And so those, the folding or the structure of an organism or a molecule helps it do, helps it do its function. So today we're going to talk about carbohydrates and the way they're folded has a lot to do with their function. Okay, so macromolecules are formed by dehydration or condensation reactions. Okay, so if you look at this right here, this picture is showing you the purple is this purple right here. So this is three monomers linked together. And this is, so here's three monomers linked together, and here's another monomer. Okay, well, if you remove water, see the H of this one and the OH of that one, you remove water, then they go together to make one polymer. Okay, so D, removal of water. Dehydration, the removal of water, puts molecules together. And that's where energy is stored. And so your notes say that the hydroxyl is removed from one molecule, and the hydrogen is removed from another, H and HO make H2O, that's water, dehydration, removal of water, the orientation of molecules and making of bonds. Okay, so highlight requires energy. To put two pieces together, you're going to put energy in because energy is in the bonds. Energy is in those hydrogen bonds. Energy is in the hydrogen bonds. Okay, so when you remove water, the molecules go together, and that made this bond right here, where that blue star is. The molecules go together, and that made that bond. So the, to make the bonds require energy. So the removal, let's make sure you got it all from this slide. Okay, the removal of water, dehydration, remove water, puts molecules together, so we've made that molecule, and energy is required. Energy required. Okay, and then it says enzymes, most enzymes are proteins, help speed up the rate of this reaction. So an enzyme may put those, the three and the four together. An enzyme may do that. Okay, macromolecules are broken down. Okay, so that was dehydration. Now we're on hydrolysis. Look at the word. Water break. And this may be hydrolysis or it may be hydrolysis. Either way. So water, hydro, break, lysis. So, so the word tells you exactly what it means. If you add water, it breaks molecules. So if you add water, hydrolysis, add water, it splits. It breaks the bond. And this is going to release energy. Okay, so this one releases energy. 
and then dehydration required energy. So energy is released when those bonds are broken. Um, again, the hydroxyl and the hydrogen make the water. So that's how you get the H and OH. And enzymes do this too. So this is just for any molecule. Dehydration puts it together, the molecule together. Hydrolysis breaks the molecule apart. Okay, so today's notes, we're talking about carbohydrates and lipids. So carbohydrates first. Carbohydrate is a polymer of sugar. So carbohydrate is a polymer, carbohydrate, a polymer of sugar. Okay, so you've, you've heard of sugar or glucose before. So a carbohydrate is just a big sugar, and they're made up of monosaccharides. So mono means one. Saccharide means sugar. Okay, disaccharide is two sugars. Polysaccharide is many sugars. So the suffix saccharide, or even the word saccharide, means sugar. So there's monosaccharides, there's disaccharides, and there's polysaccharides. So mono is many, di is two. Uh, I said that wrong, sorry. Mono is one, whoops, whoops. Di is two, poly is many. Okay, so any kind of sugar is going to be carbon hydrogen, and oxygen. But there's twice the number of hydrogens as there are carbons and oxygens. So it says, uh, it says in your notes, carbon and oxygen are equal, but two times as many hydrogens. So you may remember from a previous class, glucose is C6, so there's six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. That's, that's the molecular formula for glucose. The names of sugars normally end in O-S-E, like fructose, glucose, sucrose, uh, lactose. Lactose is the sugar in milk. These are primary energy sources for cells. So sugar is quick energy. Think about when you eat a Snickers or Skittles. Sugar is quick energy. Your body breaks those down and makes energy, and if you remember, that's ATP. So carbohydrates are fast, quick energy. Okay, so there's some examples of carbohydrates. The starch, that's how plants store energy. So if you think about a potato, a potato is full of starch. So the energy, that they make it during photosynthesis, and then they store it. Glycogen is how you store it in the liver. So when you eat sugar, you break down and use what you need, but then the rest of it you store in your liver so that you can have energy in between meals. Okay, cellulose, that, that word should ring a bell. Cellulose is in plant cell walls. You should know that already from previous chapters, but you didn't know until now that cellulose is a carbohydrate or a sugar, a complex sugar. Okay, so cellulose is the most abundant organic compound on earth. Really interesting fact about cellulose. Um, our bodies don't have the ability to absorb cellulose and get nutrition. So in all the plants that you eat, your body doesn't get the nutrition just from the cell wall. Now you get nutrition from other things, but not from the cell wall. So um, the cellulose increases the amount of your bowel movements and it's fiber. Cellulose is fiber. We just sell it as fiber instead of calling it cellulose for some reason. Okay, chitin is in the cell wall of fungi, but it's also, so fungi cell walls is chitin, but it's also in the exoskeleton of some animals. Remember, animals don't have cell walls. So chitin, you want to know the cell wall of fungi, cell wall of fungi like a mushroom, so all of mushrooms. Okay, so just a quick review on carbohydrates. Make sure you got it all. They're monosaccharides. A bunch of them together make up a carbohydrate. They're going to end in O's. They're going to be energy. And there's four examples. Starch and cellulose are both in plants. Glycogen is how animals store it. And then chitin is the cell wall of fungi. 
Okay, moving on to chubby, tubby, tubby fats. Moving on to fats. So this, this is the second macromolecule we're talking about. The first macromolecule is a carbohydrate. Second one now is a lipid. This is going to be fats, oils, waxes, and steroids. They are, do you see the word hydrophobic? Hydro, that means water. Phobic means fearing. You know how oil and water don't mix. If you try, if you try it, it won't mix. Like a little bit of vegetable oil and a little bit of water won't mix together. So oil is said to be hydrophobic. Lipids are mainly composed of hydrocarbons. Okay, so see the carbon chain. So that's all, whoops. Okay, that's all carbons. The blue line is all carbons. And then do you see how there's a hydrogen coming off of every one of them? So look how there's hydrogens everywhere. Hydrogen, 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 hydrogen off of every carbon. Okay, this, that's the hydrocarbons. Okay, two main parts. There's the fatty, there's the glycerol, which is this gray thing right here. That's your glycerol. And then the yellow is the fatty acid. So if you look, it's labeled. Okay, take a second and draw those in your notes. So pause the video and draw the glycerol and then just draw a short fatty acid. You don't have to draw the whole thing. All right, and notice um, you can see how there's a hydrogen on every carbon on those fatty acids. So a triglyceride molecule is made up of one glycerol and three fatty acids. One, two, three. So that's a triglyceride. So tri means three. This, these are saturated fats. And what that means is there's a hydrogen on every single carbon. It, it's saturated in hydrogens. The molecule has no open bonds to, more, put, more, to put more hydrogens. Um, these are bad when it comes to your diet. So this is going to be anything that's solid at room temperature like butter or bacon grease, that good stuff. Okay, an unsaturated fat, so this is saturated versus unsaturated. So you got the butter versus like vegetable oil. Okay, an unsaturated fat, it's going to be, uh, I don't have a picture, but it's going to be missing hydrogen. So it's not saturated. There's going to be hydrogens missing and they're going to appear bent. So that top one would appear like that instead of like that. And so if you remember back to the phospholipid, there's a saturated lipid and then this one is unsaturated. That's why it's break or that's why it's bent. Okay, so the unsaturated says it has double or triple bonds. So there's there's a hydrogen missing or a hydrogen opened. And these are going to be the ones that are not as bad for you, like vegetable oil. Okay, and then there's polyunsaturated where there's several hydrogens missing. Hydrogenated or trans fats, these oils are turned solid by adding hydrogens. Um, and the, these hydrogenated or it called, it's called a trans fat because they transfer into saturated. They switch. And those are, those are bad for you, too. So they transfer into the bad ones. Okay, and you remember the phospholipid has got the polar head and the lipid tails. Well, the lipid, the fatty acids, which are hydrophobic. See, fats are hydrophobic and the bottoms are tailed. The bottoms are fats. One's saturated, one's unsaturated. And that should all be a review. So take a second, pause the video, and read through where it says phospholipid and see if there's anything there you didn't know. Okay, um, remember the phospholipids are in the cell membrane, phospholipid bilayer. Okay, waxes are just alcohol and oil. So what makes lipstick... Um, a lot of what, what makes crayons, things like that. These are lipids made by combining alcohols with unsaturated oils. Okay, here's a steroid, and I, th I always think it's like three hexagons, I guess. And then um, the top one looks like a house. So it says four carbon rings with the top one looking like a house. 
And this is cholesterol. Y'all remember that cholesterol is in the cell membrane. You see it right there, the yellow? So cholesterol is in the cell membrane. Helps to keep it fluid and flexible. But excess cholesterol would be bad for you. You could stop up your, stop up your arteries and veins and cause a heart attack. And then it says lipids are stored in adipose tissue. You know A-D-I-P means fat. Lipids are stored in adipose tissue in animals that can lead to obesity. Okay, so just a quick review. Make sure you know carbs. We talked to, Today we've talked about carbohydrates and lipids. Okay, carbohydrates are going to be quick energy. Lipids are going to be stored energy. So think about energy with those hydrogen bonds. Carbohydrates end in O's. Carbohydrates are made up of monosaccharides. Lipids are made up of the glycerol and the fatty acids. Okay, and then make sure from today you also know dehyd dehydration, which is the removal of water that builds molecules and stores energy, and then hydrolysis, which is the addition of water and the breaking of bonds. So make sure you got those two, and I hope this video was helpful.